Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you my custom DIY electric unicycle. Video some of you have been waiting long enough. I've spent the last few months building it from the scratch and I'm really excited to share with you today. There are several reasons why I've decided to choose an electric unicycle over other types of personal electric vehicles like a scooter. Firstly, an electric unicycle offers a unique riding experience that is unmatched by other vehicles. The rider has complete control over the unicycle movement, making it more engaging and exciting to ride. I often take longer routes simply because I enjoy it. Secondly, electric unicycles are more compact and portable than scooters, making them easier to store and transport. Thirdly, electric unicycles are more versatile and can handle a wider range of terrains and inclines than scooters. Finally, electric unicycles are generally more affordable than other personal electric vehicles compared to their specs, making them accessible option for those on a budget. The moment I saw the electric unicycle a couple of years ago, I knew it was a love at first sight. I previously built an electric scooter, but it didn't provide the satisfying riding experience I was looking for. It was just too weak. So I decided to take on a new challenge and build an AUC instead. I wanted to create something that will meet my expectations and provide joy while riding. In this video, I will be showcasing the building process, performance and the conclusion of my project. So let's get started. Building an electric unicycle was especially challenging because I didn't have prior experience with off-the-shelf products. Without knowing how these devices behave, it was difficult to design a DIY version that would operate smoothly and safely. Additionally, Troubleshooting any issues that arose during the building process was a challenge without reference point for comparison. In hindsight, this was probably a bad idea to make something that you don't even know how it's supposed to work. To give you an idea, I will talk later in the video why is that the case. I have started by choosing a motor from an existing electric unicycle and it gave me a guarantee that it will work. After a bit of searching, I decided on a motor from Kingston 18XL. Unlike motors for electric bikes, AUC motors are specifically designed for unicycles and optimized to provide the necessary power and torque. I found out that using a mismatched motor could be a nightmare when I tried to fit a longboard motor into an electric scooter. It simply did not have enough torque to do the job properly. Motor I have chosen has maximum speed of 55 km per hour and a power of 2.2 kW. It was also fairly cheap, I bought it for around 200 bucks. The only thing I needed for that was basically pedals, pedal hanger and a tire. Tube is a generic one with a bent valve that I eventually removed entirely going tubeless. The tire is a Michelin Street Pro. Designing an electric unicycle shell took around 3 months with 70 iteration in Fusion 360. It's clear that the design process was a real challenge. I had to take factors such as weight, distribution, durability and aesthetics into consideration. The chassis was made from 3mm ABS sheets and 3D printed pieces from ABS Plus glued together. However, the end result is mediocre because the 3D printed parts started to crack. In hindsight, I wish I had used a different filament for 3D printed pieces to ensure greater durability and longevity. Perhaps PET-G would have been a better option. I have made two big mistakes during the build process, and a couple of small ones. Attempting to cut ABS plastic sheets by hand using jigsaw was the first mistake, because not only it was frustrating and time-consuming process, but it also resulted in a huge mess and uneven cuts. For a cleaner and more precise cut, I should have used the CNC or lasers that were designed for cutting plastics. Trying to make a battery of that size, 84 volts, 20 cells in series, 
for parallel without prior experience with spot welding was a second mistake. Although it eventually worked out, it took a significantly longer time than expected and the end result was not entirely satisfactory. I should have ordered this from someone who does it for a living. I have used VSC, an open source electronic speed controller as a brain of the project, which uses the FOC algorithm to control the motor. It is regarded as superior to the algorithm used on the commercial wheels, however I cannot compare it to other algorithms as I have not used them. You can find some comparison videos about it though. JBD Smart BMS ensures that the batteries are managed properly. This combination of components was actually used before, so I knew it would work. I will link in the description a couple of resources that I took inspiration from. The entire build of my AUC cost around 1000 bucks, which is roughly half of the price of the Kingsong 18XL. Considering the specs of my AUC, I believe it's a remarkably cheap alternative. If I had all the pre-made pieces, I could easily assemble the project in one day. Vast majority of the time was spent designing and waiting for parts to arrive. I will post a link to all materials I have used for this build with rough costs in the description. The biggest challenge I faced in this build was tuning in the VSC. I thought I had prior experience with this electronic speed controller, but oh boy, how wrong I was. Also, I had no idea how AUC was supposed to behave, so it took me a lot of trial and error just to get it dialed in. At first the motor was behaving erratically and I couldn't figure out why. I spent countless of hours researching and experimenting until finally I was able to get it running smoothly. Despite the frustration, I learned a lot about the VSC and feel much more confident in my abilities now. I could probably take in just about any AUC with a fried motherboard, slap VSC in it and have it running in just a couple of hours, as long as the battery and motor is intact. During the build process I have also encountered a few minor issues such as plastic breaking on the vest mount and other structural errors. However, I was able to fix those issues by reprinting parts using CA glue or drilling bigger holes. Those issues should have been fixed in the CAD model. It took me around 7 hours of practice to be able to ride my AUC indefinitely. But I never fell off during this time. The breakthrough came when I rode alongside a walking person. For some reason, having someone else beside me gave me some confidence and stability I needed to ride smoothly. From that point on, I was able to ride without any major issues. I cannot express how great of a feeling it was to finally be able to ride my own AOC. Right now I have around 200 kilometers on it. This project was immensely fun and challenging at the same time. It was definitely the biggest project I have done so far but satisfaction of seeing the final product was well worth it. I learned so much throughout the process and can't wait to tackle even bigger projects in the future, which will be another electric unicycle, but this time with my own design for high voltage and high powered VSC hardware, as well as the suspension. This is it for today's video, but it's only the beginning of what I have planned. If there will be sufficient interest, I will make a series of follow-up videos that will delve into the design and construction process in more detail, so that others can learn from my experience. Whole project is open source, so if you wish to take a look, write in the comments below. I would not recommend trying to replicate it one-to-one, -one, but it may be a good source of an inspiration. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more content like this.